This is an Osram air purifier. I, it turns out I've got a slightly older model, but that's okay. The technology is the same. Let me show you what's inside. This was suggested, incidentally, by Xander. Thank you, Xander. I hadn't come across this particular version, but this is designed for cars and trucks or vans or whatever. And it basically, it claims to get rid of everything. Well, we'll see when, when we take a look at it. Uh, the blurb for it, well, let me read some of the blurb for it. Their official documentation says, Osram Earzing Mini Air Purifier. Osram's Earzing Mini is an innovative solution to help purify the air within vehicles. Using Osram's extensive knowledge around UV light, the Earzing Mini draws in air and passes it over a titanium dioxide plate that combines with UVA light to produce a photonic catalytic reaction. This reaction removes harmful bacteria and viruses from the air. Uh, it also suggests it can remove uh, bad smells and it leaves it with fresh, clean air. It's a controversial subject, really. Uh, this one, it says, contains a number of LED 11. Mine does not contain 11 LEDs, but you'll see what's inside. Oh, there is a, there is a graphic as well. Look, here, here's, here's how it works. Um, all the polluted air with allergens and formaldehydes and bacteria, it gets sucked in and then the ultraviolet energy goes ba-do, 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 and then it splits everything into separate molecules and atoms and then it comes out clean air. That's it. Amazing. Right, let's open it up. Well, let's power it up, actually. So I've got a little power supply here. It is designed for vehicular use, so it's got this magnetic mount so you can just mount it and stuff. The air is pulled in from the base and it blows it out the top. It's got a little fan in it. Let's plug it into a power analyzer and see what sort of power it is taking. Gets the plug in the right way around. Plugs it in. It's very quiet. It is drawing approximately 270 milliamps. That's not a lot. Okay, now... If you bean it cap the bottom off while it's on, it reveals the important titanium dioxide photocatalytic converter. And also, if you just put your fingernail under there and lift this out, it shows the UVA LEDs. Now, these are actually UVA LEDs. Uh, they look white, looking at them, very pale, bluish white. But when you point at this, well, let's see if I can, let's turn the light off. Right. Uh, right, and I'll take the exposure off for extra drama. Yeah, it is actually making things fluorescent quite brightly. It's making everything fluoresce quite brightly. So these little LEDs in here really are, they're very much the UVA type LEDs. Reminiscent of the nail varnish dryers. Now, if you actually put it through, let's not try that again. If you put it through this little filter and point it, it puts this lovely pattern out. Uh, more about the pattern in a moment, because I took a picture of this filter. Right, tell you what, uh, watch your eyes, the light is coming back. The light is back. Let's move this out the way. So the concept of this is that when you stimulate, it's, it's commonly known. I don't know how accurate this is. Uh, you guys can let me know because some of you are true rocket scientists in all areas like this. But this material here is titanium dioxide. Now, the strange thing is, Here's what I think of titanium dioxide as. A white powder. It's used as a food additive. It's used as a paint additive. It's basically an extremely white pigment. But it turns out that when you fire uh, UV light at it, it causes a photocatalytic reaction on the surface. Photocata photocatalysis. Uh, this is very odd. This is almost like a metal mesh. I don't see any white on it at all. You guys can let me know about this because this... Well, I'll show you. Um, I did take a picture. I took a picture of the filter. And it looked like this. Let's zoom down on that. Zoom. And if you want to see it closer, I took an even more detailed picture. And when you get up close, it's almost like a spongy... It's like metal and it's sponge. And they actually say that uh, every so often you should pop out the frame. That To me, that seems like it's going to risk damaging it. But they say pop it out this frame and wash it to get all the impurities off it and then dry it with a hairdryer or whatever and then pop it back in. And when you take it out, it is a, it's a spongy mesh. I'm not going to squeeze it too much in case I damage it. But a set of calipers shows that it's quite thick. 
it's about two millimetres thick, so a two millimetre thick sponge mesh. But still doesn't look very wide. Yeah, I'm not sure. Anyway, let's open this up. I shall, hold on, I shall provide something. I, hold on, I'm just going to focus on this just to bring, bring the focus up to a predictable level without having to swear at the camera uh, like Ave does on such a regular basis. So let's unscrew this to see what's inside. I don't think there's a lot. Uh, I guess that the new version has more of these LEDs. I shall test these LEDs. Uh, the current was only about 270 milliamps, wasn't it? One, two, three, four, about 50 milliamps each, plus a wee bit for the fan in the back. Hmm. Is there going to be any fancy circuitry? There doesn't really need to be, unless they get fancy current regulation, although I do see resistors in the series with the LEDs. Right. Tell you what, I'm going to take a picture of this, and then we'll explore it in more detail. One moment, please. And continue. Right, well, here's the circuit board picture. Uh, what we have here is a USB-C port. We've got a fuse and a diode. The diode is a cross positive and negative, so that if it does somehow end up wrong polarity, it will basically blow that fuse. That's worth mentioning. There is a 5.1K resistor here, 512, 5, 1 and 2 zeros, and it is to dupe the USB port into providing power to this. It signals to it that it's a, a device that should be powered. Then we've got the LEDs with a 24 ohm resistor in each series, each one. And we've got the fan over here, but there's also a 510 ohm resistor. That's 51 and a 10 after it, 511, um, that uh, is in series of these pads, which I presume is for an LED, because in other versions of this, the Osram bit in the front looks as though it may light up. So this circuit board is maybe designed for that. It's really not that complicated. Uh, it is roughly 50 milliamps across these LEDs with that resistor set there, around about 3 volts across the LED just over that, and the rest is from the 5 volt supplies dropped across the 24 ohm resistor. And that is it. Uh, LEDs shine on photocatalytic conversion material that then creates hydroxyl radicals and stuff like that, and it uh, and destroys bacteria, odors, and total volatile organic compounds and all these things. I have to say their marketing looks very much like shark plasma cluster marketing. The fan, it seems like it's like the circuit board is right up against the fan, so it's restricting the airflow through quite significantly, but it doesn't really matter because this unit is ultimately, it's designed for very low air throughput and the air is being taken in from the base here and pulled through the mesh, um, exposed to the... LEDs in contact with the mesh and then expelled by the fan through this air outlet here. That is it. Uh, there's not really much else to say. It's extremely simple. Uh, I'm going to have to maybe see if I can get one of the more modern ones and see what the difference is. I wonder if they live in LEDs. I wonder if any of them are the ones they're counting, the ones that are under here, under the logo. I'm so cynical that way, am I? But there we go. So let me know what you think. Why is the titanium dioxide plate, this strange spongy mesh, very translucent transparent mesh, why is it just metallic looking instead of the, the very white that I'd normally associate with that? <laughs> Incidentally, they've experimented with putting things like titanium dioxide into roofing tiles and stuff like that on the basis that when the sunlight hits it, because when sunlight hits it, it has the same effect because it's quite a broad spectrum. It, uh, it causes that photocatalytic reaction and can supposedly remove impurities in the air. But then you also have to consider that the the flat earthers have moved into this as well. The the usual, the bedwetters, the currents, is that a derogatory? Maybe they're right. But uh, saying it harms kids with nanoparticles going into their brains because it's used as a food colouring is scaremongering. It's the sort of stuff they come out with, like 5G death beams and stuff like that. But not to worry. Um, so what do you guys think? What are your thoughts on this technology? Is it real? Does it work? I mean, it's supposed to. You get systems for invent uh, in air ducts in America and their heating systems and general air conditioning systems. 
Um, and it seems like if this is true and you can just wash this every so often and it just replenishes it, then that would be great. Or does, does it degrade over time? Let me know what you think. It would be really interesting to know.